two PC stream setups is something that you hear a lot of bigger Twitch streamers using. It ensures that they have maximum gaming performance on their main computer while that second computer handles the brunt of the encoding load. Well, while the, most guys use uh, Elgato or AVIO or Avermedia capture cards that range from $1 to $300 or more in AVIO's case, the NDI plugin for OBS will give you a free option to accomplish the same thing. So let's get into that. Hey everyone, Chris with Coalition Gaming here and I wanted to revisit a topic that has become our most popular video on the channel. So OBS NDI presents a free and easy solution for a two PC streaming setup. So long as you have a decently powerful second computer and making sure that everything is gigabit connected on the network. If you have any other questions about OBS NDI, any, anything that you may be wondering about that, we'll also be linking our frequently asked question video linked right over here and also linked in the description below. So if you wanna make sure your configuration is good, go ahead and watch that video or if you're running any issues, watch that video. It's super helpful. Anyways, so the second computer, uh, you want to make sure that specifically the CPU supports SSSE3 instruction set. That's three S's. And long story short, Intel has supported that since the Core 2 Duo days, I believe. And AMD has only supported that since the FX days. Bulldozer was the first generation to support that instruction set for NDI to work. Sorry, Phenom users and Athlon users from back in the day. Unfortunately, you're out of luck. But FX and newer, you're good to go. So let's get to the installation process. So here we are at the desktop. And well, if you don't already have OBS installed, make sure you go and grab the latest version from the OBS project website. That's obsproject.com. And if you'd like to add activity feed, viewer count, uh, chat, uh, ability to skip uh, notifications, alerts, repeat, replay them, uh, control the titling of your stream, all that sort of stuff. Select what game you're on. You can all you can do that all through the Stream Elements uh, OBS Live plugin, and that's just at streamelements.com/obs-live. You see the option to download it there. So, assuming you have OBS Studio already ready to go, go ahead and Google OBS NDI plugin, and then you'll be see you seeing this as the first link click the download button we're going to go down to the uh, windows installer exe you'll see it right there obs ndi 4.6.0 windows installer and you're going to download that it's a very small file 639 kilobytes and when that is ready go ahead and execute that we're going to run the installation of the ndi plugin for obs so we can get started on this two pc stream setup tutorial go ahead and run through the installer it will get all the files and stuff that it needs installed if it asks you to create a certain directory go ahead and click yes to that if you hadn't already created an obs ndi directory um, well that's basically what it's asking for so mine is currently finishing the installation let's see right now it should prompt to reboot the computer and assuming everything on your computer is up to snuff in order to support obs ndi you'll be fully ready to go once it reboots. And there you go, it says it right there. Uh, yes, restart the computer now. So let's go ahead and do that. And we're back, the computer has rebooted. Let's go ahead and open OBS now. OBS Studio opening up. That'll be opening up on my second monitor. I'll drag it over right now. There we are. And uh, let's see here. You gotta go up to tools and then you'll see NDI output settings. If you see NDI output settings there, congratulations, NDI successfully installed. So when you're in here from the gaming computer, as you can see, my OBS is fully set up as if it was a single PC for streaming. I have my gaming scene, I have my talking scene, I have my stream starting countdown scene, I have run my intro, I do all this stuff all through my one computer for the sake of simplicity. If I can control it all from here, it makes the second computer doing the encoding job much easier. I don't have to worry about doing anything over there, routing any audio, routing anything from there to here in order to hear it or anything like that. That's just doing the encoding and I don't gotta worry about anything else. If I need to change scenes, if I need to do any of that stuff, I do it on this computer. And uh, 
and MDI will take that and most of that encoding load that you would get streaming from one computer and ship it off to the other computer. So you go, let's go to tools, NDI output settings, you check box main output. I call mine OBS Red Beast. Give your computer a familiar name there, then press OK. And with that done, you're ready to configure the second computer. So all you have to do to get the second computer ready to go is run through these steps to install OBS Studio and the NDI plugin. Again, it has to be on both computers and when you have everything up and running, both computers need to have OBS open in order for everything to be working right. So uh, actually one more thing to go over on this computer is you want to go into settings and then configure video. Now, while NDI is turned on, you can't configure that setting. So we're going to go ahead and uncheck it. And then we're going to go to settings, go to video. And this is where some people have some issues. My base canvas is my monitor. That's my gaming computer. My, my base canvas is going to be 1920 by 1080. What I want to stream at is 720p60. It looks good and it can be done smoothly with minimal impact across any system for the most part. So I'm going to set up my stuff here. It's 1280, 1280 by 720. Downscale filter is Lanxos. And then the common FPS value is 60. This is something we're going to need to pay attention to on the second computer once we shift over to that side of things. So make sure you configure the settings for what you want your stream to go out at. And again, 720p60 is my recommendation for most people. And once you're configured here, just go press OK, go back up to Tools, NDI Output Settings, and check the box for Main Output. Now, if on the fly you needed to make any changes, you can do that just fine. Uh, you want to go to Tools, NDI Output Settings, uncheck the, main, uncheck the main output, make any changes to that video section that you need to, then go right back, check the box, and you should be good. The second computer should automatically pick up your NDI feed if you've already configured the NDI source. Anyways, talking about getting the second computer uh, to pick up that NDI source, it's time we show you that. Let's do that. And so here we are at the second computer, OBS Studio and the NDI plugin have been installed as per the process uh, that we already went over. So just do that over again on the second computer. And again, you can look at tools, you see NDI output settings there, means you're good to go. However, we're not going to be messing around in this section. You don't need to check any of these boxes here because the second PC is where you capture the main PC. In order to do that, you want to add a source. So we're going to hit the plus sign or you could right click and click add, but we're going to click the plus sign. And then you go to NDI source. NDI source here, you want to give it a familiar name. My computer is called Red Beast, so that's what I'm going to call it. Okay, now you can type here in the source name in case you have issues finding it. However, if your computer is already been discovered on the network uh, by the NDI stuff, you can just click this drop down and there it is. You may see sort of a funny looking name on the left side, but on the right side, the name that we gave it. Uh, on that side of things should reflect right here. So I gave it OBS Red Beast, there it is, select it, bandwidth, leave that on highest sync. You can mess around with the sync, it, it's just like a audio visual sync, if, in case things go out of sync, you can try internal or source timing, but I generally just leave it default and then everything else you can leave alone. Na latency mode is something that's actually relatively new, so normal will give you just a normal latency as far as how buffering works with this uh, with NDI. However, if you want a smoother stream, you can select low, which is an experimental setting. However, I heard it works pretty well. Your stream should be smoother in the long run, so go ahead and give it a try on low, but try whatever works best for you. Once you're here, you can just press OK, and it should appear on the screen. And then we go ahead and press OK, and there it is. I'm actually capturing one of our older YouTube videos on OBS on my gaming computer. So we're seeing exactly what's in OBS off of the gaming computer. And look at that. No capture card, no nothing happening all over the network. This is great. So once you have this configured, you can actually go to settings.
and inside of settings you can you this is where you have to configure your stream stream go ahead and do twitch or youtube or whatever service you're using connect your account or just uh, drop in your stream key output this is def uh, defined more with your upload connection right here in bitrate but we want to be using the x264 encoder in advanced mode x264 will give you the best image quality for the encoding and a keyframe interval of two should uh, it, that's what you need for YouTube and Twitch and most streaming services CPU pre uh, usage preset we're gonna set it to fast faster also is good very fast is the, the the standard essentially but we're gonna set it to fast this computer is just dedicated to streaming and you can dedicate more CPU cycles to encoding the stream. The bitrate, well, that, that should be defined by your maximum upload. However, Twitch has the non-partner limit at 6,000. So the closer you can get to 6,000 without going over, the better your stream will look. So let's go to video. This is where it's very important that you match it up to the output scaled resolution that I talked about on the gaming computer. So base canvas and the output scaled resolution, which is what you're going to be streaming at, should both match up to what the output scaled resolution was of the gaming computer. As well, the downscale filter needs to match and the integer FPS value needs to match. So we're going 720p60 and then we can go ahead and press OK. So now you're ready to stream and you can just go ahead and click start streaming and it'll light up your stream. Something else I wanted to show you guys here real quick is that literally everything gets transferred over from by NDI. As you can see here, the NDI source for Red Beast has the audio bar going. So any audio stuff you configure over there, desktop audio, microphone, all of that will go through NDI and be captured by the second PC to be streamed. So literally you're going to be mimicking a single PC setup because it is the simplest way to execute this. And all that second computer doing is doing is encoding the stream and sending it out. How awesome is that? And there you have it. One more note on the CPU on a streaming computer is that you probably want at least a quad core if you're going to be doing 720p 30fps streaming. But if you want to do 720p 60, 1080p 30, or even 1080p 60, you're going to want a hyper threading quad core. And that way, you have enough cores and threads available for to, to support that encoding load. Hyper threading quad core or better. Six cores, eight cores, ten cores, the more the better because then you can take that CPU uh, preset and go slower and slower with it. And uh, the slower you go with it, the better your stream is going to look at any in given encoding that you have it on. Anyways, that's the way I recommend OBS NDI be used in a two PC stream setup. There are more creative ways to use it, of course, and if you guys use it any other way, I'd love to hear how you guys are using it. Leave a comment down below with your configuration. Are you doing a different kind of two PC stream setup? Are you introducing a lot more computers into your stream setup? Are you introducing other cameras like the OBS NDI cell phone camera video that I did? Linked right over here, by the way, and also down below. You can do all sorts of cool stuff with OBS NDI and I want to hear about it so again leave a comment down below if you guys like this video click that thumbs up button click that subscribe button we always got more coming and let's talk tech let's talk NDI let's talk anything there's a discord link down below to join our discord follow us on Twitter Instagram uh, Facebook everything link down below we'll see you guys in the next video bye